This week we're back in the workshop. We've just finished our sneak wall and we finished our Makita power tool wall. So the back or the rear wall of the, uh, the workshop is looking pretty dialed in now. We've got our two rolling toolboxes. One of them's fully decked out in shadow foam. The other one is gonna be coming in a future video. Uh, but we wanna tackle this side of the workshop today. We've just had our laser, CNC laser service by HPC. We've had this for about two years and it was with us at our old unit and we've moved it across. But it was out of commission for a while. We did run it temporarily. We're running some temporary duct in and we've been running it from a laptop and it's, it's been okay. The main priorities for today are to get the water chiller up on a shelf, the compressor on a shelf, and to get our extractor up on a shelf, the bigger extractor. But the bigger challenge is going to be organizing all of the little parts that go with the laser. So this laser comes with a few little bits and bobs you need to keep safe. But we've also added an additional lens. These are really expensive and quite small. We've got the little tools that you need to be able to remove the lens cap. Look at that, I've lost it. It needs to have a foam insert, there it is. So this is to uh, use this to unscrew the lens cap. And all these little parts we want to keep safe. So we're all about reusing and recycling at Shadow Foam. And this is a floating shelf that I picked up from B&Q about two years ago. And we did have this in the old workshop too. It's just been hanging around. And today we're going to use that as the top or as the surface of like a little rolling cart, um, which will be sat around here. So we can have a keyboard and mouse on it and then we can roll it out of the way if we need to move the machine. So got a lot to get done today. So we best get started. So we've managed to uh, mount three of our um, shelf brackets and these are going to make a really sturdy shelf. I mean, I've, I've been putting, I can put my weight on one of them and we're going to have four of these. So that's more than enough. But what we've got to is we've got um, this one, this one and this one are all mounted to joists in the wall. Uh, but then this one, in order to maintain an even gap so it looks half decent, we don't have a joist there. So what we're going to do is we're going to use a... Uh, a wall anchor. What we've got here is a wall anchor kit, which we're going to use for this situation. It's the perfect situation, really. You can use this for uh, for metal work or a variety of things, but it's quite simple. So we're going to use some of the bigger anchors because we've got a nice, uh, got a big bracket that we're holding up with a big hole. So I've already marked up the wall. So we just bang the fixings in like that. And then there's little spikes on the back here which kind of hold it in the wall. You kind of want them to just dig into the wall. So there's two halves to this. You can kind of see there's a front silver part and then there's a, a, an inner part that pulls back when you pull the trigger. So you want the whole of that around the screw head. Once it's around, you then just pull tightly until it won't pull anymore and then you can let go and that's that fixing in place you know I wouldn't trust any weight on these it's just we want it on the wall and we want it solid so these are better than nothing We've got some edging here, and I've done edging before, but we do want to edge both sides. Bonds instantly, no contact required. Well, we'll go, we'll go with that then. 
Oh, that's runny. That's far runnier than it should be, I think. All surfaces to be glued should be clean, dry and free from grease. Pierce end of tube, yeah, easy. Spread a thin layer of glue onto both surfaces. Allow glue to become tacky, which is what I did. Align surfaces together and press firmly together. The full bond strength will be achieved after two to four hours. Hang on a minute. This isn't what was agreed. Well, you get the gist. All right, well, that was a hell of a montage. We, we got a lot done there. We've um, mounted the worktop, and then this is our extraction fan here. So we, we jigsawed a hole in the, in the worktop um, for the extractor to basically just slot on top. Um, and I'm really, really happy with how that's turned out because it allows us to get this laser about 100 mil closer to the wall than we did before, which is opening up this space a lot better. Uh, we've also got the, um, the cooler is now facing forward. So when we turn on the machine, we can see the screen, we can see the temperature, we can see the uh, gauge on the compressor. We've got that rigged up to our compressed airline. The compressed airline used to be here. So we patched up the wall and repainted it and we've moved it over. Uh, and it's much safer there because you can reach it and quite easily get the compressed air nozzle. Um, but it's not going to, it's not in the way here. It's not going to cr 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 uh, crack your shoulder, which is what had happened a few times previously. So we used to have a little expel air fan up there, which we've removed. We're now running it from this proper extractor here and we've got it on a flexible line underneath. You can see that so we can pull it out. We can make, we can get access to the back, fully maintain it and then wheel it back into place without too much effort really it's quite easy and we can still get it right back to the wall so that's fantastic so the last thing we've got to do now is sort out the computer situation you know we are trying to create here the ultimate laser setup so i think the fact that the machine's on wheels we don't really want and we've just lifted all that gear up so we can move it around we don't now want to block it in with a keyboard shelf so we need some on wheels that leads me to this set of trend boxes here now we brought these in because we wanted to map them out and make inserts for them, which we now have and they're available on the website. So there's two types, there's two styles of trend box and we do inserts for both of them. So the inserts um, come like this and they just slot straight into the box. And we've got this size and we've also got a different style of insert for their toolbox, which is, there's a few more cutouts in this one and that works in the same way. But the best thing about this box is it matches our branding and our colours really well. And it's the perfect 
depth and width for a keyboard and it will fit where we want it. And obviously if, it's, if we make it a little bit taller, it'll be at the perfect height to use the computer and then wheel it out of the way. So today's, uh, the next part of the project is we want to make a top for this and then we can actually mount this drawer. So we're going to make a little frame to hold that up and then what we end up with is a really great little worktop for a keyboard and a mouse and a little drawer which we can put some shadow foam in and organize all the little bits that we need to keep with the machine. Right, so that is this box finished. We've kind of finished off the, uh, the, the box top and we've framed up the, the drawer housing. And then we've only got screws on the outside, nothing on the top, and we've just used some standard filler to fill up them screw heads. So as soon as that's dry, we'll give it sand and then we can paint it. So I suppose the next thing is uh, we've got the drawer in the workshop and we can figure out the foam uh, insert for in that drawer. So we've got a load of little bits and bobs that go with the laser. So we're gonna try and get that drawer sorted. So let's go and do that. Okay, so this is the drawer that I've got to sort out. Um, this will fit inside that box top that we've just built. And we are gonna put a handle on the front of it, but it's just the right size to organize all these little bits and bobs. So in here, we've got these 41 mil spacers. So this is the focal length of the, um, of the lens that's fitted in the machine. And uh, we've got a few of these. And basically when you put a workpiece in the machine, you can uh, adjust the height of the bed and you want to set it to 41 millimeters from the, uh, from the lens kind of guide. So we've got a few of those. We want to make sure we've always got these on hand. So we'll put those in the drawer. We've got the keys for the side panel and we've got the keys. Well, actually they're the keys for the front panels. They're the keys for the side panels. We've got the mouse that we use with the laptop and it's little USB fob that goes with it. We've got the spare lens and they're really expensive. So we want to protect them. We've got the little spanner that you use, the little tool to undo the lens cap. These are really old. We got, I had these from another job, uh, like alcohol wipes, but I'm pretty sure they're dry as sticks. So that's a good thing about organizing with shadow foam. You, it kind of draws your attention to things that you don't need, helps you organize and sort out. We've also got a packet in there we don't need. So we've also got, I mean, usually we'll do little test cuts on paper. So having some scissors handy is pretty useful. We've got the spanner in there. There's a few little nuts and bolts in there that you can do, that you uh, sometimes have to adjust or tighten up. So we were gonna include an adjustable spanner. We've also got these tweezers there to help get the lens in and out. Uh, these Allen keys came with the machine. So we're gonna include them, not that we've used them, but we'll include those in the liner. We've got a spare fuse that came with the machine. We've also got a couple of memory sticks that we use because you have to um, load the drawings onto the laptop and we usually use those to do it. We've also got the, the USB. This is like the, uh, the, the, the key that you use with the software. So you have to have that to operate it. We've also got a tape measure and then another little spanner that came with the set. So all in all, there's lots of little bits and bobs here that we don't want to lose, like this little jig and this little lens cap. We don't want to lose them. So we've got a little piece of foam ready. We've got a 30 mil piece of foam and we're just going to uh, cut all of these quickly into that insert and make sure that we're never gonna lose anything again. We're gonna know where it all is. So first job is get your foam and figure out the layout. So we're gonna go with, um, we're gonna go with these in two stacks. I've already had a bit of a rougher, a bit of a play around with this. I'm trying to make sure it all fits in. That's good enough for me, I'm happy with that as a layout. So next thing is I need my anti-cut gloves on. And then a scalpel from one of our cutting kits. And that's all we need. So it shouldn't take too long this, we'll get started. And I'll show you how you cut the first item. So I'm gonna start with this big old spanner here because we're looking at it roughly in the middle. And all we do is put a little bit of pressure on it to keep it, uh, keep it from moving. And then use the uh, scalpel like a pencil we're not looking to cut very deep. We're just 
following the profile of the tool around and we're just marking the foam. So we're not worrying about how deep we're cutting here, just cutting lightly into the foam and trying to make sure we follow the profile all the way around without missing any bits and keeping the scalpel as tight to the tool as possible and keeping it 90 degrees to the foam, keeping it perpendicular so we're not going off on an angle. That's really important that you keep the scalpel 90 degrees. Once you've gone all the way around, you can take the tool away and you can just press down on the foam and you can see the cut you've made. Now what we want to do is follow that cut around and because this span is about 10 mil maximum, we want to cut down about 10 mil. So what I do is kind of on the side of this scalpel, you've got right in and you've got like a little, um, the little holding piece of metal. So I'm kind of going to cut down to just the tip of that uh, piece of holding metal there. And that'll be about 12 mil down, which is more than enough. It doesn't matter if you cut deeper than you need because you can peel back layers to suit with, and, and leave enough material in the bottom, even if you've cut the profile around it. So once we've cut all the way around, we know we're deep enough. It's then easier to take off a glove and you're just looking to push your finger down the end of the cut you've made, starting at one end or the other, and then you're just kind of forcing the foam back. And you've just got to follow it along with your fingers. And we've got a lot of height in this drawer, so we're not going to sink the foam really, really deep down because we can, there's lots of clearance above. So we're just going to take out one layer and then that is the first item done. So we'll finish the rest of the drawer and then we'll get it test fitted in the drawer housing. all sorted that probably only took about 10-15 minutes and now we've got a place for everything that we use um, and it's to go in this drawer so we'll just give it a quick test fit and that's perfect that's exactly what I wanted so that's a nice tidy little drawer now with everything that goes with the laser and obviously that is going to be in the top box which we're just waiting for dry to dry so let's go and have a look if that's dry All of the uh, all of the kind of like service machines, the the water, the compressor, the extractor, are all up and organised. We've put this monitor here, and we might use it with the with the laptop, um, but it's not essential now uh, because we've obviously got this worktop, this rolling worktop that we've made, uh, and I'm really happy with this too. I think it's a fantastic kind of versatile uh, little work counter that we've made, uh, and obviously you can lift that top off dead easily. We can access the four trend boxes underneath, and we've got a few ideas what we want to organise in there. And obviously we sell inserts that slot straight into those little boxes. And the counter can sit on top there and we've got the drawer. 
And I think that red handle's a really nice little touch. That came from Amazon, seven pounds for five of these handles. Obviously we've got all the little bits and bobs that we wanna keep safe with the laser, all organized in there as well, so we're not gonna lose anything. And it's the perfect size, this countertop, for our laptop that we run the laser from, but then also a mouse mat, and obviously the mouse as well. So we've got to get a little mouse mat to go there. It's the perfect height for working, loading up the drawings and running the laser. So I think this is a huge, huge upgrade, and I'm really pleased with the design of this. I think for something that we've put together quite quickly, that's gonna solve a, few, a lot of problems for us. So if you wanna get organized like this, Go to shadowfoam.com where you can buy shadow foam in a variety of six colors, loads of different sizes, and we ship everything free next day within the UK. And we also ship to Europe and worldwide as well from our website. We also supply uh, inserts for all of the major power tool cases, just like these trend boxes here, but also Dewalt, MacPack, and Milwaukee. So go to shadowfoam.com and, and check it out. So if you like this video, make sure to subscribe to the channel and also drop us a comment below what you think we could use this laser for. In the next couple of weeks, we've got another video coming, which is gonna be showing you how to use a laser, a CNC laser, to cut shadow foam, how to engrave shadow foam, and how to use it for making tool inserts. But we'd love to hear your ideas on what else we could do with it. So if you like that, drop us a comment below, and we'll see you next time.